faculty, family, friends, and graduates. Welcome to the graduation ceremony for the PharmD class of 2020. I'm Linda Wellage, the Dean of the College of Pharmacy, and I'm delighted to welcome all of you to our celebration today. Well, it's, this is not likely the format for graduation you dreamed about when you entered the college. Um, it is in many ways the same. We can't replicate the usual pomp and circumstance while we are socially distancing. But the reason we come together remains the same. Throughout life, no matter what else may be going on, it's important that we remember to pause and celebrate our accomplishments. It is so great to have all of you here to do just that. Graduates, I know each and every one of you has accomplished a lot. And I'm grateful that we could be together to recognize all you've achieved. Before we move ahead, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge and thank those serving in the military and those serving on the front lines of our COVID-19 pandemic. Their courage and sacrifice is greatly appreciated. Graduation marks the end of one journey and the beginning of a new one one as health professionals. Your professional journey will be full of opportunities to make a difference in people's lives. Together over the past four years, we have worked hard to ensure that you are prepared for the road ahead. Whether you're directly taking care of patients, working in health systems to improve care delivery or discovering new drugs, it's now up to you to go forward and shape that journey in order to make a difference in the world. At the College of Pharmacy, we aim to prepare the best pharmacists in the country. And as such, this is not an easy program. Your success in the classroom was a tribute to your commitment to excellence and your willingness to persevere. Your success in your practice experiences demonstrates your professional responsibility your unique skills and your commitment, importantly, to helping others. You have supported patients and communities and have served with other pharmacists at the front lines of healthcare. While it's um, difficult to say what precisely will be in front of each of you in these challenging times, your accomplishments are truly impressive. Many often say that past accomplishments are predictors of future success. And with that in mind, you're all bound to do great things. However, I would say that future success is also based on your ability to adapt to new circumstances and to continue learning. You've all recently had occasion to demonstrate your adaptability and resilience as we quickly modified your final clinical rotations. While understandably, some of you are worried whether these changes would allow you to graduate, um, I am pleased that we all adapted and um, we are here today to celebrate that graduation. Your ability to adapt and persevere along with your talents will truly carry you forward into the future. Every one of us at the College of Pharmacy is so proud of you. I hope we will continue to see you often and that you find time in your busy lives to give back to the college and the profession. I hope you continually look for opportunities to learn and to advance the practice. And I wish you happiness in your personal and professional lives. Now I would like to invite Associate Dean for Student and Professional Affairs, Dr. Randy Seifert, to present our Student Teacher and Preceptor Awards. Dr. Seifert. Dean Wellich, I think Dr. Seifert's in a, a different Zoom, uh, as was I. So I got the new link and then I came into this one. So um, I can go go back and grab them. I'll use this moment while we're connecting with Dr. Seifert um, to just say again, congratulations to all of you. 
And also, as I'll speak at the end, um, there are wonderful words of celebration and gratitude and best wishes for the future as um, on our website related to this graduation. People from across the world took time to share with you their thoughts on how amazing you've been, but also their dreams for you for the future. will be full of opportunities to make a difference in people's lives together. All right, the rest of the of, uh, of us that had the different link are starting to join. the best pharmacists in the country. And as such, this is not an easy program. Dr. Seifert, go ahead and start the awards whenever you're ready. Randy, you're muted. Randy, you're on mute. All right, let's start over. Uh, we'll begin with the awards for excellence in experiential education. Students com complete advanced pharmacy practice experiences in their fourth year where they're able to apply skills learned in the classroom, in practice settings across the Minnesota nationally and internationally. And students who exceed expectations while on their advanced practice experiences may be nominated for the Award for Excellence in Experiential Education by a preceptor and, and, qualif and, and qualify based on their performance on required activities and approved by their uh, course director. I won't read all the names today, but we'll show them on screen for each rotation type, starting with acute care institutional practice. Congratulations, everybody, for job well done. Next, we'll uh, go on to ambulatory care pharmacy practice. All of our stars. And then uh, the next would be uh, community pharmacy practice. And finally, patient care and non-patient care practice. And congratulations, this is a great accomplishment for all of you. Well done. I'd like to go on with the uh, Community Service Award. Uh, this is for a PD4 who has made significant contributions to community education. And our award winner this year is Twin Win from the Duluth campus. Twin stands out among her peers in both formal and informal efforts to educate the community. She is quick to support an initiative that benefits those on the, camp, on the margins 
especially those that focus on education and mental health and, and substance abuse. She planned a handful of new initiatives that had an enormous impact on community health, one of them being a student opiate summit that brought together students from professional programs across Northeastern Minnesota to discuss solutions to the opiate crisis. Congratulations, twin. Our next award is the Dean's Award, and this is awarded to a student for their achievements, accomplishments, and or service to the College of Pharmacy. And our award winner is Hannah Van Ochten from the Twin Cities campus. Hannah is one of the founders of the Public Health Advocacy Student Alliance and an interprofessional student group at the University of Minnesota that aims to inform and empower health professional students about public policy legislation that affects their patients and their careers. FASA worked to create a medication recycling program uh, or medication repository in Minnesota. And this program allows for medications that don't get used at long-term care facilities to be redistributed rather than thrown out. Congratulations, Hannah. Our uh, next uh, uh, award is the Halley Bruce Memorial Award. And this is for a PD4, demonstrating outstanding achievement in hospital pharmacy. And we have two uh, winners awarders and one is Brianna Farrell from Duluth and then uh, Nathan Berkey uh, from uh, Duluth as well. Nathan, during his acute care APPA, uh, he took uh, ownership for not only his patients, but an extended patient load in order to gain further experience as advanced APPA learner. Nathan has the clinical intuition that is at the core of successful clinical pharmacy practitioners. And I can envision him being very successful in his future endeavors in hospital pharmacy. Congratulations, Nathan. Brianna, as one of the lead pharmacy interns on the discharge delivery service to essentially health, essential health, Essentia Health at St. Mary's Medical Center, Brianna provided education to hospital patients on all newly prescribed discharge medications. In, coordination with the healthcare team and transitions of care services. She trained many other pharmacy interns on the discharge delivery service. She has abundant experience in this novel hospital pharmacy service and, and congratulations, Brianna. Our next award is the Catherine and Randall Seifert Award for Rural and Underserved Community Engagement. This award is for a PD4 leader who has engaged in rural, underserved and or indigenous communities and contributed most to the culture of engagement at the College of Pharmacy. This award is given to those inspiring others with, uh, with work that includes service to rural underserved and or indigenous community communities. And our award winners are this year, uh, Rowan Mann, Nadira Mohammed, and Twin Win. Rowan was instrumental in developing the vision of conducting the research and analysis of other states' medication repositories and developing a business plan. She gathered support from the community and the Board of Pharmacy and convinced the Minnesota legislature to pass a bill in May of 2019 to support the medication repository in the state of Minnesota. Rowan displayed much courage and, and strength in, in this effort, garnering support from various stakeholders, mentors, and legislators. Congratulations, Rowan. Nadira is a member of BRAVE, a group of young Somali women who have taken on the issue of opiate use within their community. This group held a panel at a mosque and other venues to speak on how roles can have an impact on changing the trajectory of opiate crisis in the communities, including limiting the supply of prescription opiate, opiates in circulation, raising awareness of the risk of addiction, identifying and treating opiate dependent individuals and collaborating closely with community efforts to help individuals navigate the current healthcare system. Congratulations, Nadira. Twin has focused her training around her commitments to serving people in poverty and health disparities. Twin became active in health fairs and the Hope Clinic early in her pharmacy education. Twin's commitment to community health is also evident in her choice to pursue a master's in public health degree so that she could increase her impact on the community she serves as a pharmacist. She is an inspiration to those who, who get to work with her and congratulations, Twin. The Isaac M. Koltoff Rokai Research Award is for a PharmD4 who has contributed to and shown promise 
of Excellence in Research in Pharmaceutical Sciences. And we have several uh, winners, awarders, uh, Parker Johnson from the Twin Cities, An Lay from the Twin Cities, Carolyn O'Donnell from Duluth, and Elizabeth Smith from the Twin Cities. Parker stands out as an individual who is intelligent, courteous, hardworking, organized, and committed. In spring of 2018, Parker joined the Center for Orphan Drug Research and worked on a project in Goucher's disease. He developed a method to isolate small vesicles from blood samples that could potentially be a resource for identifying biomarkers for diagnosis and treatment response. He went on to include this concept and approach as part of a review article for which he was the first author, which was published last fall in a premier journal in this area of research. His nominator places him among the top 1% of PharmD students with regard to his writing skills. That's a great accomplishment, Parker. Congratulations. On interest in infectious disease, particularly HIV, led him his research group. His research project was focused on the role of drug transporters in drug disposition in the female genital tract. This work could have significant implications in the optimization of drugs used for HIV prophylaxis in women. Ahn has taken ownership of this specific project and has been involved with experimental design, data collection, data analysis, and interpretation. He presented a poster abstract at the American College of Clinical Pharmacy, and the work is being prepared for publication. Ahn has also shown impressive initiative by taking on the writing of a review article currently under review with HIV medicine. Carolyn has worked with Dr. Carrie Hager. Carolyn is a co-investigator and was a project coordinator for a project involving transitions of care between a community mental health clinic and primary care. This resulted in one co-authored publications, two publications in progress, and a poster at several conferences. She won awards for the work, including the Student Achievement Award at the Nexus Summit. She is, has collaborated on projects, including a study evaluating an interprofessional collaboration with behavioral health providers, which was presented nationally and internationally and published in the Journal of Interprofessional Education and Practice. Elizabeth worked on a lab-based project characterizing the activity of the antibiotic phosphomycin against clinical isolates of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Her Melendi Peters Summer Research Scholarship on this project has, has evolved into several additional sub-projects. Elizabeth presented her work poster at the International European Infectious Disease Meeting in April of 2019. She also has a portion of this work accepted and presented at the Premier National Infectious Disease Conference, ID Week and her abstract was chosen for platform presentation at the Society of Infectious Diseases Pharmacist Annual Meeting, where she was notably the only student presenter. Congratulations, everyone, on such a, on a, such a great job. Our next award is the Merck Award. This is for the PD4 class representatives, and they are Zach Otto, Caitlin Peterson, uh, both from Duluth, uh, Jeremy Cabani, and Brittany Michael from the Twin Cities. These students have served as class reps for several of or all years in the PharmD program and have done an exceptional job working on behalf of their class on curricular and other issues. Thank you so much for the work you've done to represent and support your PharmD classmates. Being the class representative often involves behind the scenes efforts, communicating with faculty, students, and administration, and these efforts are greatly appreciated. Thank you for all your work and the past four years working with and on behalf of your classmates. Congratulations. The MPHA Patient Education Award is for a PharmD4 MPH Academy of Students of Pharmacy member for skill and ability in public health education. And this year that award goes to Haley Nelner from Duluth. Haley has provided excellent public health education around the opiate crisis. She positively represented the University of Minnesota College of Pharmacy with her June 9, 2019 presentation entitled Naloxone and Monitoring 
for a patient with diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder and alcohol use disorder. This presentation was part of a series of programs hosted by St. Gabriel's FMC Project ECHO. During her ECHO presentation on naltrexone, she took full charge of the question and answers with confidence and clarity. Congratulations, Haley. Our next award is the MSHP Outstanding Student Award for a graduating PharmD student who is a member of the Minnesota Society of Health System Pharmacists, the Chief Scholastic Excellence, and is shown leadership in health system pharmacy. Our winner for this particular award is Kylie Wormsley from Duluth. Kylie is motivated, highly engaged, and insightful. While on his rotations, he was able to connect the dots between strategies, even when seemingly unrelated, altered his communication style appropriately to a variety of audiences and connected with a wide variety of leaders and teams genuinely and with ease. Kylie has a high level of emotional intelligence, displays considerable empathy, and is able to relate to colleagues and patients alike. Quite simply, Kylie is the kind of student that makes being a student preceptor easy and so rewarding. Well done, Kylie. Our next award is the Mylan Excellence in Pharmacy Award for a graduating student in the top 25% of his or her class who demonstrates a high degree of personal motivations and, and possesses uh, a unique ability to communicate drug information. Our awardee for this award is Taylor Gup, uh, Gupa. Taylor has exceptional communication skills. She has the ability to gracefully communicate to patients and professionally communicate with providers. Taylor led a project with the Student Resource Center that incorporates educating students on a variety of drug information in a clear and concise manner. Taylor has co-authored a clinical review on the adverse effects of fluoroquinolones in geriatric patients, and that's currently under review. She has served as a, as a pharmacy representative on the healthcare panel for physical therapy and occupational therapy students in order for them to better understand the roles and responsibilities of each member on the healthcare team through a case discussion. Hey, congratulations, Taylor. Our only Gisfold Medicinal Chemistry Award is for a graduating student with an exceptional record in all chemistry related courses for professional, uh, in the professional curriculum and potential for graduate study in medicinal chemistry. And our awardee is An Lei. An performed exceptionally well in the College of Pharmacy courses with medicinal chemistry content. He is also very active in public service in the community. He carried out Melindy sponsored research with Dr. Melanie Nickel studying, studying the effects of the multi-drug resistant protein, uh, a promiscuous uh, MYCN uh, regulated efflex transporter on intracellular concentrations of the antiviral drug tenofovir uh, in uh, the female genital tract. On congratulations, and um, you'll have to help me pronounce that uh, protein someday um, when we're not uh, when we're not trying to read it for graduation. Um, our Pharmacy Alumni Society Graduating Student Award is for a PharmD four for scholastic excellence and extracurricular involvement. And this is Melanie Mahoney from the Twin Cities. And their nominator, Melanie, is passionate about many of the volunteer and, and leadership positions she pursues and makes time to prioritize them in addition to upholding an impressive GPA and conducting research. In 2019, she represented the Phillips Neighborhood Clinic and our College of Pharmacy at the Society of Student-Run Free Clinics Annual Conference in Omaha, Nebraska. After attending, Melanie commented that she was proud of how integrated the pharmacy profession uh, is in our local clinic. She co coordinates bi-monthly uh, races and team building events for the group and serves as a running mentor to people uh, experiencing homelessness and those recently released from prison. Congratulations, Melanie. The Rokai Award awarded to the graduating student with the highest GPA in the PharmD program is Victoria Smith from the Twin Cities. What an incredible accomplishment. Congratulations, Victoria. 
The U.S. Public Health Service Excellence in Public Health Pharmacy Award, and this is for pharmacists of the, uh, the pharmacists of the U.S. Public Health Service, established the Excellence in Public Health Pharmacy Award in 2003 to really encourage student pharmacists to become active in public health. This award recognizes pharmacy students who demonstrate a commitment to public health. We recognize student pharmacists who are active in developing innovative approaches to current public health challenges and those who will help lead our nation to a healthier future. And the awardee is Carolyn O'Donnell. And the nominators wrote, this year we are recognizing 90 pharmacist students from across the country for their innovative and impactful efforts to address current public health challenges. Pharmacists are entrusted, accessible healthcare providers, and they have the capacity and responsibility to produce a positive impact on our nation's health by educating members of, our, of their local community on the importance of living a healthy lifestyle. Pharmacy students have similar opportunities to make positive impacts on public health in their communities, and we hope they strive to continue and increase those positive impacts as pharmacists after graduation. Pharmacists and pharmacy students alike are pivotal in advancing public health. On behalf of the Chief Pharmacist, Admiral Ty Bingham, Carolyn is recognized for her skills and passion for research inform, informed practice and dissemination to improve the care of individuals with opiate use disorder. And congratulations, Carolyn. Now that concludes all of our student uh, award. Uh, congratulations to all of the winners. And now I have the honor of presenting the awards for a few of our amazing teachers and preceptors. We'll begin with the teachers of the class. <coughs> Excuse me. As a class, you voted to select two faculty who have demonstrated their commitment to the college's teaching mission and have provided a dynamic educational experience over your four years in the curriculum, empowering you to become leaders in patient-centered interprofessional care. And please join me in congratulating our 2020 teachers of the class, Dr. Jared Van Hoosier and Dr. Betty, Bet Betsy Hirsch. Dr. Van Hoosier, as the nominators, nominees, uh, nominators wrote, has been a close friend and value, valuable educational resource to the entire class of 2020 in Duluth since they started their P1 year. Dr. Van Hoosier always went above and beyond to ensure the class of 2020 was set up to succeed. From his numerous clinical pearls, pieces of invaluable career advice, and his concern for the well being of the students, it was clear that Dr. Van Hoosier cares deeply for his students. Dr. Van Hoosier consistently led by example as a professor, incorporating student feedback and always striving to deliver content in the very best possible way. For all, from all of the Duluth students in the class of 2020, thank you, Dr. Van Hoosier. Dr. Hirsch sets a great example by being not only a talented educator, but also a kind and generous person. As course director for infectious disease, she went above and beyond to make improvements to this notoriously challenging course in response to student feedback. Her willingness to listen and support students, both professionally and personally, has been an inspiration. And from the Twin City students in the class of 2020, thank you, Dr. Hirsch. Preceptor of the Year Awards. Each year, fourth year students nominate preceptors from their advanced pharmacy practice experiences. These criteria are commitment to students, ability and aptitude to facilitate learning, communication skills, professional role model, practice ethically and with compassion for patients, collaborate with other healthcare professionals as a member of a team, accept personal responsibility for patient outcomes, high standards of professionalism and development of unique teaching techniques. Our first winner is Dr. Adam Gregg from Gunderson Health System in La Crosse, Wisconsin. The student nominators stated Adam's style of teaching and wealth of knowledge is unmatched. His duties, he does 
He does daily atom rounds that help close gaps between classroom work and real life patients. He is very encouraging, honest, and I truly appreciate that in a preceptor, Adam's style of teaching helps keep students from becoming overwhelmed. Another reason why Adam is so incredible is his ability to have fun while teaching. He ties, a, it ties in random music to help bring home key points and to listen them and to lighten the mood when necessary. He is exceptional at providing his avenues of thinking and does a great job of teaching students how to triage issues. He is very laid back and he bodes well for students that are trying to recall knowledge from a classroom and, and transition into being a, a pharmacist. Uh, congratulations and thank you for all you do, Adam. And our second winner uh, is Dr. Jennifer Riss from Cub Pharmacy in St. Louis Park. The student nominator said, Jen is a role model for those students lucky enough to rotate through her site. And she clearly cares about her patients, provides effective leadership to her pharmacy team and dedicates her time to teaching students. Her approachability with regard to questions, extensive knowledge base and ability to help students develop their skills makes it clear that she has been precepting for a long time, but she still has remained enthusiastic and, and relatable. She ensures that students learn the correct way to do things and understand the reason behind procedures. It's clear that her patients love her and have come to rely on her professional input and in help managing their medication therapy. In learning from and working under Jen, I was able to develop skills that will be useful in the future as a pharmacist, both in utilizing clinical knowledge, but also with time management organizational skills, communication, and problem solving, skills which are invaluable and difficult to learn in didactic coursework. I want to add my correct congratulations to the preceptors of the year. Our students are lucky to learn from such great pharmacists as yourself. Now I'll turn it back over to Dean Wellies to induce our, introduce our student speakers. And now we have two student speakers that have been elected by the class. We'll start with the Duluth campus PharmD class speaker, Zach Otto. Um, Zach started his pharmacy journey being elected by his fellow students for the role of class representative. Since then, he's tried very hard to ensure the voices of his classmates were always heard. He worked with the faculty and students in various roles to foster a positive learning environment while encouraging his peers to maintain balance and joy in their daily lives. From board games to writing to giving back to his community, Zach's personal goals are never far from his professional ones. Zach's interests in and out of pharmacy have shaped his passions for the betterment and well being of those around him. Wherever life takes him, Zach is sure to, um, he will always be looking out for his peers. He only hopes he can continue to pursue the betterment of himself and others as long as he can. Please join me in welcoming Zach Otto to speak on the behalf of the Duluth campus PharmD students. Zach? Hi everyone. Uh, thank you to everyone who has taken the time to be with us on this very strange day. I know it's not what any of us had in mind uh, for our graduation six months ago, but I'm still incredibly grateful for the opportunity to speak to you all today. After being told I would have the honor to address my class this year, I thought about what kind of speech I would wanna give. I thought about it long and hard too. Uh, graduation speeches can be emotional, inspirational, reflective, or just something else. Um, and after putting a lot of consideration to it, I think I just wanna to talk to my class for a moment. So hi Duluth. Um, it's been a while and I hope you're all doing well, even though we're all stuck at home. Um, one plus side, of practicing social distancing is it's given me a ton of time to think back on our four years and think about our journey in the world of pharmacy. And honestly, one word comes to mind more often than any other, and that is wow. I consider myself so incredibly fortunate to have met you all and to get to know you over the last four years. It's the most incredible, you're, you are the most incredible, compassionate, intelligent, and motivated people I've ever met. We all came from so many different places. We had veterans in the military, parents to wonderful families, 
people who took a gap year or two, people who graduated undergrad early, people who had entire careers in different fields, people from all over the world. And that was before we even started. You're all capable of so many amazing things and I'm constantly blown away by how you all not only thrived in an incredibly difficult curriculum, but you went above and beyond anyone's wildest expectations. We had people plan their weddings, overhaul entire class organizations, and get multiple jobs, all while facing the hardships life throws at us in stride. Some of you faced hardships I don't think I could ever endure, even without the stress of school weighing us all down. Any one of those things would be enough to be proud of for the rest of our lives. But beyond all of the accomplishments, what floors me is the unbelievable compassion you hold in your hearts. I know that for me, when things were hard and life decided it wanted to try to fall apart, I found myself surrounded by the most unbelievable love I could imagine. And it was a love that I saw in you all every day to the entire world around you. It is something that you cannot learn or be trained in, and it will carry you all to amazing places in your lifetime. And so here we are at the end of our academic journey in pharmacy, looking at a pandemic ridden world, wondering what is the next step. Sure, we study and take our tests and get our jobs, but really what is next? I don't know, but what I do know is that the world is not ready for us and the things that we'll do. But for now, if I can say one last thing, please enjoy this moment. It's not what we thought it would be, but we're still here. We made it and nothing can take that away from us. Thank you again for humbling me with the honor to speak to you today. I love you all and I can't wait to see what we'll do. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. And we now have our Twin Cities Campus PharmD class speaker. Brittany is a student leader hailing from Chicago, Illinois. She is a proud graduate of, Carl of the Carleton College and will never let you forget that. As a student, she is, was heavily involved in campus climate and social justice initiatives. Outside the classroom, she was often found at the climbing gym or tossing a fris frisbee with her classmates. Brittany is passionate about innovation and making the world a better place. She is creative, enthusiastic, and a constant source of motivation for those around her. She hopes to become a pharmacist that practices in non-traditional settings and is excited for a journey ahead. Please join me in welcoming Brittany Michael to speak on the behalf of the Twin Cities Campus PharmD students. Brittany. Thanks, Dean Willage. Oh, good afternoon. And thanks everybody for joining us today. Despite the challenges that, like Zach said, COVID-19 continues to throw at us. Thank you to the families, our college faculty, and our student advocates for helping make this ceremony happen. We're joined today to celebrate the class of 2020. We're doctors now, and I'm so proud of us and what we've accomplished and how hard we worked to get here. It wasn't easy, but we did it. I know we all hope to be taking pictures together and hanging out today, but COVID-19 is making us practice some resiliency with all these changes. And that's kind of what I wanna talk about today, practicing resilience through change. Over the last four years, I've been lucky to witness so many moments where we were resilient as a class. After our very first biochemistry exam, I remember that some people did really well and others did not. And to that, Fergie, our professor, lovingly told us, you know, it's really just not that hard. You just have to look at it, it's just not that hard. As much as that made us laugh and a little bit uncomfortable, he gave us the motto that would define us for the rest of our doctoral education. As a class, we are truly resilient. Even when it's hard, we make it look like it's really not that hard. Do y'all remember when we were about to take that neurology exam? I can recall thinking I did not study nearly enough and I know I'm not the only one. However, all that anxiety immediately faded when we received the exams in the Twin Cities and they were one-sided. We'd only gotten half of the exam. This immediately caused an uproar and the entire classroom devolved into chaos. And upon hearing one TA panic a little bit on the mic, we all collectively said, oh. I burst into a laughing fit. As a class, we made it through that by making it funny. We kept our cool in a situation that was clearly gonna come back to bite us in the butt. And that's basically what we do. We get through it by supporting each other, 
and exhibiting some top-notch resilience. The TA situation was quite hilarious, but we've been through some tougher times as well. We had three beloved students of ours have significant health problems. One of our classmates had a tragic fall off of a ski lift. One had a terrifying breast cancer diagnosis and another got a dangerous infection while practicing pharmacy abroad. And through all those challenges, we got through them together. We wrote and signed cards, sent countless emails, visited hospitals, made meals and more. It was encouraging to see us band together like a true team. And I hope that we continue to hold those memories and that familial feeling with us as we move on to bigger things. As we prepare to move on to jobs, residencies, unknown futures like myself, and maybe even career changes, I just wanna extend a big thank you to all of the class of 2020. Thank you to all of you, all of you who always cut the awkward silence on the mic. Thank you to those who never once touched the mic. Thank you to those we couldn't keep off the mic, like Ethan. Thank you to Amber from Duluth. Thank you to the ITV people who always had to pay attention in class. Thank you for always asking questions, offering witty conversations across campuses, and keeping one another motivated to go on. I'm confident we'll continue to do much of the same, helping each other get through challenges that we face both now and going forward. COVID-19 is a challenge. As essential healthcare workers, we'll be called to help each other through that. And if at any point, if you feel unable to make it through, our Facebook group will always be active and I'll always be one email away. Reach out for help. Continue to take part in the family that is the class of 2020. With one another, we were never fail. Congratulations, class of 2020. This is a success that you've truly earned. Thank you, Brittany. I now have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker, Tracy Anderson Hay, who is a clinical pharmacy specialist in kidney transplantation at Hennepin Healthcare and a clinical assistant professor at the University of Minnesota College of Pharmacy. Dr. Anderson Haig is responsible for the care of inpatient and ambulatory kidney transplant recipients and donors. In addition to her patient care activities, Tracy is also a residency program director of the pharmacy, um, of the pharmacy residency program in solid organ transplant and a preceptor for our pharmacy students um, for their advanced practice experiences. In 2019, she was one of three pharmacists nationally recognized with a master preceptor distinction by the American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy. Graduates, you may remember that Dr. Anderson Haig's moving remarks at your first retreat in Sandstone, the first time you came together as one class, it is very fitting that we're able to have Tracy here with us today to send you off this time as pharmacists together in spirit. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Tracy Anderson Haig as your keynote speaker for today. Tracy. Good afternoon to family, friends, faculty, and especially my newest colleagues, the class of 2020. It's official, you've added the word descriptor, pharmacist, to your identity. You've become that long awaited doctor of pharmacy. You have the letters PharmD to write behind your name. But today I wanna to focus on another descriptor, essential. Class of 2020, believe it, you are essential. With all the talk of being essential lately, I decided to look it up and see its formal definition. According to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, the word essential means of the utmost importance, absolutely necessary, indispensable. You've been given a great opportunity in your chosen profession of pharmacy. You all have been given an outstanding education here at the University of Minnesota, both in the classroom and in practice. You have all the knowledge and tools necessary to be an exceptional pharmacist, whether you work in a retail setting, a hospital, a clinic, or one of the many other venues within our profession. And really, if you break it down, any role you play ultimately will result in the optimal use and dispensing of medication. That may look like prescription processing, therapeutic recommendations, order verification, formulary decisions, 
prior authorization approvals, patient assistant program applications, drug research or development, medications, prescriptions to be dispensed to support the health of the patients we provide care for. Prescriptions must be dispensed, but pharmacists, we cannot be dispensed of. We are essential, indispensable. Being involved in a kidney transplant, I'm big on organ donation. And the past four years, you've donated your brain to the study of pharmacy. Today, I implore you to donate your heart and your spirit to our trusted profession. This doesn't mean you personally need to move mountains every day. If you have a passion for your role and utilize all that you have the ability to do, you'll make a difference in the pharmacy profession and more importantly, in the lives of your patients. Practicing pharmacy provides us the platform to be essential. And sometimes the simplest things in doing your job will result in an overwhelming experience to remind you of just that. I have a patient who I met several months before his transplant during the workup process. Early after his transplant, he had issues with high potassium leading to additional medications and ongoing dietary restriction. Ultimately, that post-transplant process was not exactly what he had been envisioning and he was noticeably frustrated. We spent a fair amount of time together during his early visits, learning his new medications, routine, and often when this was happening, his labs were pending. He was distracted, anxious, hoping that latest intervention had paid off. Admittedly, as we waited for the results, there was some time spent talking about books he'd read, recent travel or films, a needed distraction from the process. Some days the lab report came back and it ended with rejoicing and high fives and others, there was despair. Regardless, we got creative. We got creative with medications and we ultimately solved that drug therapy problem. I see him less and less frequently now since things have stabilized, but each time we do have a clinic encounter, he gives me a new book recommendation and always ends our visit by saying, thank you so very much. And each and every time I respond by saying, I'm just doing my job. Shortly after his annual visit, I received a card in the mail. On the front, a simple thank you. Inside, you made such a difference and it is so deeply appreciated. I didn't clearly recall making a difference worthy of a Hallmark greeting card. He included this message to help me out. Tracy, as you know, the success of a transplant is based on the match, the surgeon, the nursing staff, medications, and follow-up. One thing that is so often overlooked in the process is the value of the human touch. I cannot begin to tell you how much your being there has aided my recovery, both physically and mentally. I know you're just doing your job, but please know that in my world, you've gone above and beyond. If you ever have a moment when you wonder if you've made a difference in anyone's life, please remember me. You have been more important to my recovery and success than any of the medications you've been, you have prescribed. Pharmacists, we are essential. The medications we optimize and provide for patients are important to improve health outcomes, but it's the pharmacist, the most accessible members of the healthcare team, ensuring those medications are used appropriately and persistently all in the context of each individual patient. That's what's really making a difference in the lives of our patients and in our healthcare system. I didn't fully realize at the time what I'd been doing for my patient just by being his pharmacist. And I bet he had no idea the impact that his words would have on me, maybe some of you. The letters PharmD behind our names are important, but letters like this from patients, that's far more meaningful. Just doing your job is life changing for patients. These words continue to drive me. When I'm walking out for the evening and my phone rings, I turn back and answer it. I don't wanna pass up an opportunity to be essential. Fully realize and never take for granted that pharmacy has given us that gift, the opportunity to make a real difference for our profession and our patients. Always give 100% and do your best, even if it's five o'clock on a Friday night. A famous doctor, Seuss that is, once said, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Back in Sandstone, I posed several questions to your class, including, 
Will you lead your practice and profession by setting a positive example, pushing all pharmacists to embrace the opportunity to practice at the top of our licensure? Will your enthusiasm for our profession and what you can do for society spark others to be motivated to advance the profession of pharmacy within healthcare systems and beyond? Well, friends, colleagues, I no longer ask, will you? Because it's time and I'm confident that you will. Class of 2020, just doing your job for our profession and our patients is essential. We need you. I wanna leave you with the words of Woodrow Wilson. You are not here to merely make a living. You are here to enable the world to live more amply with greater vision and with a finer spirit of hope and achievement. You are here to enrich the world. Do not overlook the opportunity you've been given to cement pharmacists as essential in the lives of our patients, our health systems, and the community. Find a passion in caring for others. Donate your heart and your spirit to pharmacy, those you support and those who you'll care for. Best wishes graduates as you combine the science of pharmacy with the art of caring and embark on a long life of finding your passion in our profession and making that essential difference. You are indispensable. I look forward to our paths crossing along the way. Dean Wellage, thank you for the great honor of providing this address today, and I'll turn the program back to you. And Tracy, thank you for those inspiring words. We've come to the part in our ceremony where we would traditionally, the graduates would across the stage be hooded, an important symbol of your accomplishments over the past several years. Since we can't gather in person, we've replicated this moment by having Dr. Paul Rinelli, just as he would have on the stage at Northrop, read the names of our graduates over a slideshow. You can find this link on our commencement website and I encourage you to take some time to view your slide and those of your classmates after this event concludes. Now I would like to invite Senior Associate Dean of the Duluth campus, Dr. Mike Swinoski, to lead the class through the professional of a pharmacist. Mike. Thank you, Dean Wellich. Uh, it's such an honor and pleasure to be together with all of you today. And uh, although we're not together sitting in Northrop, uh, we are together and I, and I feel that. Uh, thank you to everyone who, who made this possible and uh, uh, congratulations to all you graduates. You can find the link to our oath on the screen if you'd like to follow along. And now will the oh. University of Minnesota- Ooh, I feel okay right now. Class, PharmD class of 2020, please rise. If available, we ask that you please turn your mm -hmm. video on and remain mm -hmm. muted. Please joining via our Zoom meeting, feel free to adjust your settings to the gallery view so you can see the class. Faculty and guests who are pharmacists, please stand if you're able and join with us to recite the oath. I promise to devote myself to a lifetime of service to others through the profession of pharmacy. In fulfilling this vow, I will consider the welfare of humanity relief of suffering my primary concerns. I will apply my knowledge, experience, and skills to the best of my ability to assure optimal outcomes for my patients. I will respect and protect all personal and health information entrusted to me. I will accept the lifelong obligation to improve my professional knowledge and competence. I hold myself and my colleagues to the highest principles of our profession's moral, ethical, and legal conduct. I will embrace and advocate changes that improve patient care. I will utilize my knowledge, skills, experiences, and values to prepare the next generation of pharmacists. I take these vows voluntarily with the full realization of the responsibility with which I am entrusted by the public. Congratulations, pharmacists. Now I'll turn it over back to Dean Wellich for her final remarks. Graduates, at this point, I ask you all to face your cameras so your family, friends, and supporters can see you. 
It's been said that it takes a community to raise a child. It's now your turn to acknowledge the contribution of your community in your education. I encourage you to use the reaction buttons and show your gratitude by clapping for your parents, grandparents, partners, spouses, children, other friends, relatives, and supporters. We in the co college know how much all of you have contributed by the way of finances, moral support, encouragement to the success of our graduates. We are extremely grateful for all that you've done. We also acknowledge the support of family members and supporters who were not able to see this journey to its end. We know how proud they would have been to celebrate here today. Graduates, please join me and the faculty in thanking those in your lives who have been most important to your success. Graduation is not the end. It is the beginning. You are at the beginning of a new journey in your life. Even though your formal education is over, it doesn't mean your connection with the college is disappearing. The relationships you've developed with your classmates, faculty, preceptors while in school will continue to evolve and grow in your career. And I can assure you that the college will remain committed to all of you in working with you and the profession throughout your um, future career. Thank you all for joining us today to celebrate the accomplishments of the class of 2020. You will find several additional elements we have compiled on your commencement website, including congratulatory notes, as I mentioned earlier, inspiring vi videos and several slideshows of your class. So take time to view these and share them with your family, friends, and via social media channels. Thank you again and congratulations, PharmD class of 2020. You are amazing.